Hello, my name is Michael Wiles, and today I'm going to be walking you through the Insight Explorer Easy Builder uh, application for Cognex cameras. We start with uh, our application steps gives us our walkthrough of our process, so it's pretty streamlined in step one, then step two, etc. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to choose what are we connecting to, what visual sensor are we working with. So we're going to select this Millersville 11 camera, which is the one hooked up at this station, and we'll connect to it. That's going to give us the image that it sees. We can update that image with the trigger. So if it, I move it around a little bit, and trigger it again, you'll see that happening there. Now to make our lives a little easier in terms of setting up an image, under Setup Image here, you have this Live Video button. And that's going to give you an actual live screen capture of what the camera is seeing. This also makes it easy to adjust your aperture for your lighting, how much light you're letting in, and your focus so that you dial into whatever your image or feature you're trying to identify. After we've set that up, we can ex exit out of live video. Now what we'll do is we'll set up our trigger. The trigger is the camera effectively taking repeated snapshots, and those are what it's actually going to process. So it takes one snapshot, processes it, takes another snapshot. And you can set up how you do that right in the uh, edit acquisition settings here. We're going to go with continuous, so when we're actually running this job, it's going to continuously take these snapshots at a 500 millisecond interval. Get that out of the way. And uh, it's going to expose the image, uh, if you're familiar with cameras at all, uh, for eight milliseconds for how long it's, it takes for that image. Uh, after this, what we'll do is let me show you where all you can do this trigger. So right here in Setup Image, you have the trigger button. Again, this is going to just recapture that image every time I move it. You have a trigger button right here. A little convenient on the menu bar. And then you also have, under image, you have trigger right there that you can do. My favorite is the hotkey F5. Pretty fantastic. All right, our next step is we want to be able to define this image in real world units, so an actual real world measurement. So again, under setup image here, we have calibration type. I'm just gonna do a simple edge to edge detection here. And we'll keep it in millimeters. And here we're going to select edges. So now the blue outline you see here are the definable edges that the camera sees. So I'm just going to take a basic across here. And I've already measured that, so I know that it is it's 45 millimeters. So set that to 45 millimeters and calibrate it. Now you can see the image over here. So now you've trained that the image relative that it can see that distance between edge one and edge two is 45 millimeters. Now anything else relative to it can extrapolate and apply that uh, to any other measurements throughout your image. Our next step is going to be moving on to actually defining this image um, and what we will be searching for uh, for a valid part. So locate part, we can come down here and we will select Patmax pattern. And this is just going to locate a particular uh, pattern feature within the image, and that's what it's going to use to uh, define if the camera is currently seeing a valid image or not based on what you've trained. So if we add that tool in here, you're given two uh, search areas to work with here. You have a model area, and you have a search area here, the green. The search area is where within the field of view of the camera are you looking for a possible part. And you can crop that down if you have a, a setup that you're only going to be uh, coming down a conveyor line within a certain area of the, camp, uh, of the view so that it cuts down on processing time. The larger the area has to search, especially depending on how you're searching, the longer your processing time is. So if you can minimize it down to what you only really need, uh, that's ideal. Our model area is within the search area, what are you actually looking for? So we're just going to look at, this is a pretty unique little thing over here uh, in terms of pattern. 
So we'll select that. You can also change how the uh, reticules look. You can make a circle or a polygon or anything like that for the search or for the model. I'm just going to stick with the square though. Once we add that in here, there's a couple of things now to kind of be made aware of. So the first is you have settings here that you can uh, adjust and the biggest one that I have seen um, to hold a big impact is the rotational tolerance. So right now, if that image was seen, it would be a successful image, it would pass any checks. But if I rotate the part by some amount of degrees, take a new snap, it's no longer seeing that image because it's been rotated. It's looking for within, it was 15 degrees here, and now it's gone beyond 15. But if we bump that up to like 90, let's say, well now it sees it again because it knows that with that rotation, it's still acceptable as an image. Uh, another thing here, you have under trained image, you can see this is what you actually selected for an image. And again, up in the palette here, um, this is where anything, any location or inspection tools you've added, applied, um, will be listed so that you can reference them. Once we have trained an image to some degree, uh, you can also inspect it and do further um, inspection methods to more closely define defects that you may have in products so that you can identify those and pull those out. Um, but for now, we're just going to save the job as is. Uh, to, it's just job test. And now that we have our job set, we can run the job. Now here you're going to have a running uh, setting of what you've got here, and we have zero passes and one fail currently. And if I were to trigger it again here, now we had one pass out of two attempts and the one fail out of two attempts. You have processing time. And then what we can do is we can also go online, and now this is going to run that trigger at our earlier setting for um, the continuous, you know, 500 milliseconds. And you can see that, okay, we're getting all good passes because we're still within our tolerance. But now if all of a sudden the image is gone, we're going to start failing. So if it doesn't see that pattern, and then once it sees it again, again it's going to uh, be a successful pass. And that's your basic setup on how to uh, locate a, an image in Cognex inside EasyBuilder and how to run a quick job. Thank you.